Hi everyone. My name is Sampath. I'm working as a researcher at Agriculture Agriculture Canada. For the past two years, I have been using nanopore sequence in the ecology for my research. For this presentation, I'm going to give an introduction about what is nanopore sequencing, what's the input of those sequencing technology for genome assemblies. Let me close this video so you won't get distracted. Learning outcome for this presentation is to make sure that you understand what is nanoprocessing sequence technology and how it works. And also to introduce about the importance of long range sequence technology for assembly of plant genomes. Okay, before getting to nanopore sequence technology, I'd like to give a brief introduction about what is the GNS sequencing generation. I assume that most of you know about what is genome DNA sequencing. The DNA sequencing is decoding the genetic information of our and DNA. There have been various technologies have been developed on the course of time. This Sanger sequencing is the first genetic sequence technology, which has been developed uh, in the concept of chain termination method. In the second generation sequence most with sequencing based synthesis like alumina based solid or four by four technologies. And third generation technology is the recent technologies, especially by Fagbio and Nanopore and Fagbio. Those are commercially available for now. These first generations are quite longer read size compared to the second generation, but the throughput, the depth of the sequencing you get is really low, which means that you have to pay more money to get more amount of sequence. On the other hand, second generation sequencing is NGS, next generation, also called as next generation sequencing technology, where you can get high thorough potential, but in terms of read lengths are really low, like less than five minutes. Recently, by last uh, 10 years, there have been sequence rapid improvement in third generation sequencing technologies. Nanopore and Tagbio, those can sequence a read length of more than 10 kb outreach up to like two megabits, especially in the nanopore sequencing technology. So in this presentation, I'm going to give an introduction on this nanopore sequencing technology. And also want you to keep in mind that there are other technologies available for scaffolding. So if once you thought the sequences from this technology, in the context, then you put them into a scaffold to make a chromosome level assemblies. You may want to use this scaffolding technology, which is just very restriction based map, instead of using like genetic linkage map, which takes ages to develop with the populations. Before I'm going to introduce about nanopore sequence technology, I'd like to show you this two minute, less than two minute video, which will Clearly, they fix what Sanger to explain this forthcoming slides. So let's watch it. This is the Munayan database having closer. This is the closer. This is a DNA library. The DNA where you adapted your adapter sequence as well as motor protein which then loaded onto a flow cell. Flow cell contain many wells or nanopores. For example, this is one of the nanopore where your DNA library is loaded. This powerful helicase is unzip the DNA. And then other DNA is entered into nanopore. You can see the flow of the current. This process repeats. These are the nanopores. 
Okay. Now you watch the video. The video shows about a nanopore, nanopore is a purple helicase protein which unzips the DNA sequence and and make sure that it enter it into a nanopore properly. There is adapter molecule adapter binds here. But it, for the first thing is to keep the stands together. So when the DNA is passes together, as a DNA are different molecules or different shapes, so it can. Uh, alter the flow of the ionic current. The current is caused as the DNA is negatively charged. When the flow is entered inside this nanopore, that DNA current is altered so that you can able to see that alteration. Then you capture those alteration as a graph. So this is called a sputal graph. This was then decoded or base called to nucleotide bases. This concept was around from 1989. This David Deemer is the one developed this idea, but coming into commercialization it took about more than like 25 years. In 2014, the first MENA sequence was available for uh, commercial, commercial available for, for every researchers, I guess. So this nanopore protein was then genetically engineered to make sure that it can be able to you know, pass the DNAs with the, the pace of like 400, 400 base, at least 400 base per second, which makes them you can be able to uh, you know, sequence in a high throughput manner. So overall, the concept of this nanopore sequencing is to work, it works on this high flow, changes in the flow of ionic, ionic current which leads to uh, have a different formation of different uh, graph structure. So it's then which can base all two bases. There are two long range sequencing technology available. Um, one is nanopore sequence technology and the other one is the PacBio. PacBio, as I said, the nanopore sequence also works on this ionic flow change that it was recorded in a graph manner and then it's based called. In fact, bio, it uses synthesis model like polymerase to synthesize the DNA stand. There, which then when the fluorescent labeled nucleotide is incorporated, that you can see uh, or you can record those, the color change. So this color, or then converted into nucleotides. This is how the pack bio works. Compared to nanopore, pack bio is a kind of size limiter. You cannot sequence, you cannot get more longer reach in pack bio since it's sequencing by synthesis. However, in this case, a nanopore it doesn't matter how big your size of the DNA, it just can go inside and it can produce. For example, recently more than two megabase sequence has been generated, single rate sequence has been generated using nanopore, which is the highest by any sequencer. There's a famous sequencer for Minaya, which is very affordable to everyone, which is the cost like less thousand dollar. Another case, the pack bio, which costs about five hundred thousand dollar, which is really expensive. So it's researchers can easily or affordably can develop their sequencing lab. In, in, uh, in their own lab. I'm going to introduce about a few of sequencing instruments. It's not all, every instrument are, mm, available from the nanopore sequencing. Here is Manayan, very famous nanopore sequencing instrument, which has can hold a single flow cell containing 2448 pores. This flow cell can you can run it like 48 hour validity. You can run it in, in a single stretch or you can do it on a multiple, multiple rounds. Each time 512 sequence chance, sequence at, at a time, it can be able to produce up to 10 to 25 gigabits. 
So once you used, you can just wash it and then you again load your viewer library and then you can run it again. So that way you can you can run this flow cell for like more than one time. You want it to have a more sequence of this genome, so better use it for 48 hours. There is other instrument called Gridaya, which is just a 5x of this flow cell. You want to increase the height of image, you don't want it. Like it takes about two days to complete, so you don't want to know spend time on sequencing. So, in the, in the sense, a uh, medium throughput can be achieved, for example, 10 giga data can be uh, sorry, 100 to 125 giga data can be obtained from this flow cell uh, in a two days. There is the other one called Promethean. This sequencer has has a different flow cells. It can have a force up to 12,000 per flow cell. So you can able to sequence 100 giga per flow cell. This is a flow cell model, you see, which is used for Promethean, which means that you can able to sequence really, you know, really, really high throughput sequencing for, for any genome. For example, in, plant, in plants, you may want to sequence really high amount of Mm -hmm. uh, high throughput means like high depth. We wanted to sequence so it can be uh, done easily using this Promethean, but it's quite expensive compared to other instruments. This may cost about $125,000. There's recently a plangle which is uh, kind of testing its instrument, just has 126 posts. For example, you just don't want to waste your flow cell. Instead, just check your library quality and everything. Uh, using this plangle, this is a one-time use. So you can make sure that the library is really good, so you, you will not be best your you know, library. For example, sometimes you not obviously get 100 gigabyte libraries, not really good. So in that case, it will be really important. There are other instruments, which is for like an automated library preparation and other sequencing compute results available, meaning, but uh, these are the major instruments you wanted to know for now. I'd like to give an idea of how and uh, what's the price and how the the sequencing case looks like. This this is a um, so when you so first time register and you can able to get all the materials in thousand dollar. For example, this is a Menayam sequencer. This is, this is a portable um, mobile sized device with a plus a plus a specific cost about five hundred dollar if you buy in bulk and like the cost varies how you how much you quantity you buy and there are kits library preparation kit library washing kit this is the importance of this nano sequencing is they have kits and everything and, and it's very um that steps are very um, convenient to do or it's, it doesn't have to be like very professional just only in terms of loading to this uh loading library to the cell, but most of the time you get used to this technology very easily and that prepare steps is not that that huge compared to other um, shorter library preparations like illumina ones this slide summarizes the importance of nano sequencing technology first it has no invest capital or investments so which means that Every lab can afford, afford to have this um, sequencer. And the lab library preparation method was really rapid, simple, it effective. And the nano sequence can produce more than, um, more than 300 KB and average based on, depends on your library. Direct RNA and direct DNA sequencing is possible without um, any PCR. What we're doing is we are using sequencing by synthesis, especially in a case. And there will be high throughput and a multiplexing also available. And direct methylome analysis, you don't have to do any, any separate sequence for methylome analysis, just using this direct DNA sequence, we can unlike the methylome I'll show you in the forthcoming slides.
There are major drawbacks in this uh, signal technology as a new technology has been rapidly improving, um, like for chemistries or sequencing gates. When I was sequenced, I in a proposal I used to get something like two giga, but now we, we now we can able to get 15 giga. It was quite interesting. They have improved a lot of you know core chemistry as well as the sequencing gates. However, the major drawbacks, what I say is that the read, raw read error rates, which is about two to 15%, and this is really huge. You, know, you really don't want to have this, but you know, this much error rate in your sequence, for example, in our which is a gene can have like 100 base pair, you know, two base pair, which is really you know, huge. So that's you don't want to because of this rapid DNA pass through that nanopore it causes and also it's not much. Uh, it also is just single rate based. Uh, there is other error called homopolymer error when it's just sequence produces the signal like uh, for, for the poly E or poly T times it doesn't convert it or base called really well. And there is other one, it's not a major, really a major drop, but I see like you need a really high amount, high multiple DNA, uh, which is important for this. Here, okay, so using long read sequence technology, you got long reads. So, what's the matter? Why you need what's the importance in this uh, of this long reads for especially the plant uh, genome uh, or plant genome assembly or, or annotation? For example, here on my left, here, this is the tomato genome was sequenced for using short rate sequence technology, mostly by less than 50 days per, it's less than 500 days per, for more than 10 years. With the effort from 300 people around the world, but yet it's not complete, it's, it's lots of fragmented. This is what you see when, because you cannot, you don't know where to put these puzzles. As search rates, it's really, there's a complexity. But when you have these puzzles are like bigger size, you are definitely can able to put it into pieces together and make it more contiguous. Assembly. This is called a contig more contiguous assembly. You won't have this complete assembly if you want to have them in a, want to use that for further analysis of graph improvement. So this one, you can do it in a, one, in a month with five people, better contiguous assembly as the size of the fragment or reads are more than 10 KB, even you can able to achieve two mega, like 200, 2000 KB. This is one of the examples showing how good the long read sequence technology. This is the chromosome five of the Brassica nigra genome, which is from our work. You can able to see these references in the reference slide. This is the black mustard genome from so far. This is done with short rate sequencing and this one is long rate sequencing. Uh, you can see this, especially this collinearity means like those are, those are basically from genes conserved. This, these white spaces are not available or not able to sequence with short rate sequence technology. So for example, we got about 20 megs uh, are sequenced, especially this centromere or three centromere associations. This green is showing the, the depth of repeats. So when there is a lot of repeated in nature, so it's really hard to assemble. And you know that plants are really complex. Even 90% of the genomes are repetitive, especially for the maize or wheat. And you need this technology to comp to compose those complexities and also polyploidy nature. The other advantage of nanopore sequencing is you can sequence a full length mRNA instead of just fragmenting it. You know, you think this you don't know which isoform is come from this DNA. It's just kind of awkward to use shorter sequence technology when you just have this and we try to predict. Where is, what is that mRNA is or what's the, what are the isoforms? But in this case, when you use long reads, you can directly sequence the complete gene. This complete 6x on a single reading, which means that you don't have to worry about 
assembling those uh, short waves. And other important soft nanopore sequencing or long wave sequencing is its direct molecular analysis. For example, you can see this graph, Eagle graph, is, shows us the C's when with methylated C and the un methylated C and the unmethylated C showing different um, pattern where uh, it can just with the direct uh, native DNA sequence you can achieve this. But in the case of when you want to do with short rate or bisulfate sequencing, you have to prepare a different library which is does the bisulfate conversion and then you do the sequencing. And so those steps are eliminate, can be eliminated by this long read sequencing technology. And pro are as well as um, uh, Pacway also able to predict uh, the DNA methylome using the uh, DNA sequences. As I said, there is the one that Nanopro has some drawbacks. The, I found the most important one is the long read, uh, raw read accuracy. It has about like uh, to 10 percent or 15 percent error rate. So this is what you see when you read the raw um, or uncorrected nanoparids or the illuminar which is illuminates reads are 99.99 percent highly accurate reads compared to this nanoparids or long reads. But you can correct those reads using those um, when you have a high depth also using that short reads. So you map the short reads and you can eliminate or you can minim, uh, minimize or eliminate those errors, error rates or change it or just correct for those rates using that. There are programs available. Okay, summarizing my talk. So in this talk, I, I hope I have explained about what is nanopore sequence technology, how it works and the principle of that change of uh, flow of the ionic current, which uh, which causing the changes in the graphic pattern, so then can be based on. It does the sequencing without synthesis, unlike any other sequencing technology available. That's why this sequence technology used in space as well. The standard pool rates helps to assemble genomes with really high complexity nature, uh, and to bring into a Nearly continuous or uh, full full length assemblies and nanopore sequencing technology can have a high error rate uh, rates, but it can be covered uh, uh, managed with the with the tools available. Especially when you increase the read depth, or also when you increase uh, when you use several short rate technology. For now, you have to use this method, but in the future there have been development is going on. Uh, like using double sensor, which means that when you predict, when you get the signals, highly accurate signals, um, signal graphs, then it can be converted into a high quality basis, which way that the drop uh, read, uh, error rate can be you know, minimized or eliminated. Direct RNA sequencing and molecular analysis is really a plus for this nanotech sequencing. So I definitely um, suggest like whoever uh, getting into sequence technology, this is a really good technology to use. This now technology not only for that, this whole genome, but you can also do the research sequencing or like a sequence enriched, uh, enriched analysis, whatever. And it's also multiplexing. There have been um, technology for high throughput genotyping, it's still on the road. Okay, so there are further um, references and uh, resources for further reading. You can go through this. Uh, there are also good paper from Natural um, Biotechnology. Uh, I also have worked on this for the past two years. So we have a biart available. So we hope to publish uh, this work uh, soon in Nature Plants. Now, for bio, uh, there's a good paper for if you want to have a practice on how nanopore sequencing. Uh, sequence or the softwares and the codes and the, there is a very good paper as well as the big GitHub um, page. So make use of it. And if you have any other questions, yeah, you definitely feel free to contact me. Uh, I really like to thank 
and Dr. Sanjay for giving me this opportunity to share my uh, our experiences here. Uh, with that, I'm going to stop my video and uh, I'd like to say goodbye. Stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. Thank you.